Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your favorite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. Uh, and welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A, uh, where I'm Mark, a former dive instructor, do my best to answer your scuba diving questions from the internet. So if you do have any scuba diving questions, by all means, put them down in the comment section underneath this video. Use this hashtag either at the beginning or the end of your comment. Doesn't really matter as long as it's in there. Highlights it behind the scenes so that I can find it. Uh, I do type out an answer Answer, so you do get an answer as soon as possible, as does the wonderful uh, audience. Everyone uh, in our community does like to, uh, to answer questions, um, which is just awesome because it saves me a bit of a job, to be honest. No, they do awesome work, and, uh, and I don't think I've had to correct anyone yet. They're usually very correct. Um, Today I'm answering a question about scuba diving cylinders, and in particular overfilling cylinders from the Blue Jedi. So Blue Jedi 83 says, hi Mark, thanks for all of the tips and tricks, you're welcome. Uh, question about PSI in scuba cylinders. Most shops fill Alley 80s past 3000 PSI, as well as HP, uh, that's high pressure tanks over 3442. Is that okay or should I empty the tanks down to their respective PSI post fill? Uh, yeah, cylinders, they're not gonna blow up if you go a few PSI over their working pressure. In an ideal world, the, the filler would have enough time to fill up each and every cylinder slow enough to get a proper fill up to the exact PSI or bar. However, we have gas laws to contend with and like needy customers and time limits. So in this case, the, uh, the combined gas law, uh, which combines Boyle's, Charles and is it Gay-Lussac's uh, law, and high, just combining high pressure, volume, and temperature, how they all relate to one another. The problem is with filling cylinders, it's, um, it, it's kind of the opposite. If you spray an aerosol can like deodorant or, um, or lubricant or whatever, the can itself gets cold. That's because it's going from a high pressure state to a low pressure state. When something goes from a low pressure state to a high pressure state, like when you're filling up, a scuba cylinder it gets hot so the problem with this is that you can fill it up to 3000 psi it's just a nice round number i'm not going to do the 3400 um if you fill it up to 3000 psi in like a few minutes it'll go up to 300 uh, 3000 and then the cylinder will start to cool down and because it's cooling down because you've got a, a solid structure a solid container that means that the pressure on the inside is going to reduce so by the time they actually get to the water that 3000 psi is probably going to be like i don't know 2800 so what a lot of fillers will do to compensate for that is to overfill it depending on how quickly they've had to do it and then hope that when it cools down, it'll actually cool down to its working pressure of 3000. It's, um, it's not really good for the cylinder, but realistically, cylinders are, are tough. You, you'll notice on the shoulders or on the neck of your cylinder, it'll have like the working pressure stamped into it, that 3000, and it'll also have a, a test pressure or a TP or something stamped into it. That's usually one and a half times that working pressure. So you have this huge safety margin of what your cylinder can actually go to, but we only fill it up to here. Uh, so don't worry too much about it. One place that a lot of divers usually find out about this is they'll they'll go to a nice sunny country and they'll they'll rig up their BCD onto a, a cylinder that's on the side of the dive boat in the sun and they they rig up their regulators they pre they pressurize everything they check how much gas that they got in their tank plenty um, they they strap it on they jump in the water and they go for a dive. And for the first few minutes, divers don't tend to check their gauges. So you'll go from like 3000 PSI when it's hot and in the sun, you jump in the cold uh, water. It's not particularly cold, but it's colder than just basking in the sun. And the pressure will drop substantially just because of that temperature drop. Um, 
and divers will think, oh, I've been breathing a lot, but actually it's just the, the change in temperature. So um, that's the, the main reason. Should you drain it down? No, um, yeah, cylinders have that test pressure. Uh, so uh, ideally it should be at the working pressure, but uh, I, I wouldn't worry too much. I'd enjoy just the extra few minutes that you get over that, uh, that overfill. Yeah, we used to do um, partial pressure blending uh, for nitrox at the dive center. There, there's a few different ways of doing it. You can use membranes or you can just use like pure oxygen and air to, to make nitrox mixes. And to be able to do it, you, you have a calculator. There's an app on your phone nowadays. And you know like the, the pressure and the, um, the pressure, the volume, and the concentration of nitrox in the existing cylinder. You want to top it up to 30%, 32% or whatever. You type that all into your, your calculator and it will say, oh, okay, fill it up to here with pure oxygen and then top it up to its working pressure with just air and that will get you to 30% or whatever nitrox mix you want. Uh, but if you do that too quickly, of course, the cylinder heats up and then you actually don't have enough oxygen in there. You top it up with air and then by the time that it cools down, you've either got a short fill where there isn't 3000 PSI, there's a little bit too less because it's cooled down, uh, or you get the wrong nitrox mix and then it is just a, a real pain to try and blend it back to, uh, to whatever it was. So we had to be really, really careful of topping it up, waiting for the cylinder to cool down or topping up so slowly that it never really got hot. And yeah, you can go to your local dive center and, uh, and whilst they're filling them up, uh, just say, oh, hey, can I just, just feel that cylinder? And you can feel it's physically warm to the touch. Um, it, it won't get hot to the touch, uh, but yeah, just you touch it and you feel it's warm and you go, oh, okay, and then by the time that it cools down, that pressure on the inside will drop. It's something that we always have to contend with because um, if you've got like tens of cylinders that you really have to fill up as quickly as possible, you can either fill them all up to their working pressure, put them to one side and then have to get them all the way back and then top them up by the time they've cooled down or you fill them up hot and then hope that when they cool down, it cools down to pretty much the other working pressure. Uh, but I wouldn't worry about like draining off any excess. It's, it's not gonna damage the cylinders. Um, and I think there is a slight argument that it might stretch the threads a bit uh, of, the, uh, of the valves, but um, I don't, th it's not really my expertise. I don't think it's a huge issue. Um, but yeah, the best thing that you can do is just give your uh, your filler as much time as possible to fill up your cylinder and tell them. Uh, just say, oh, hey, you've got plenty of time. Uh, I'll come and I'll collect it like tomorrow or whenever or in a couple of hours uh, just to give them, oh, okay, I don't really have to just fill this one up in, uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, you've got plenty of time to fill it up nice and slowly and, uh, and get it up to the, uh, the proper temperature without it getting too hot. Yeah, it's just one of those things. And smaller cylinders will have a, a greater effect because you're charging a smaller volume. And um, if they're charging it from banks, so you'll have these huge, great, big cylinders like J cylinders, um, multiple ones of them that we fill up to two, 300 bar or 3,000, uh, 4,400 um, PSI. And um, and we'll decant from them so it can be a lot faster than if you just hook it up to a compressor and just press the button. Um, the compressor is usually fairly slow. It depends on the size, obviously. Um, compressors can be a bit slower and uh, at a better rate, but uh, yeah, just give them as much time as possible to fill up your cylinders and it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, any other questions, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Uh, use the Ask Mark hashtag to get it featured in an up and coming video. Uh, remember to head over to our website, scubadivermag.com, check out all our latest news articles. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.